So, with Zeri arriving on the live servers, of course, we also got her color story. Unlike bios that summarize the entire story of a champion, color stories tell us what those champions are doing now. And interestingly enough, together with Zeri, we also got a story for Pantheon. We'll talk about that story in the next video. But what's fascinating is that these two stories have something in common. They both acknowledge the ruination. As you'll see in Zeri's story, it is just briefly mentioned. But it is cool to see that Riot is dedicated to it. And as they promised, the events of the ruination are affecting future stories. However, this new Zeri story has another point. It did reveal how Zeri met a very special character. Also, as a bonus, even though we don't get any names, in the art of this story, we can see that the main baddie is actually Baron Spindlow, a camp baron who appeared in the universe before. And besides him, we have one of the goons, who on universe is simply titled Vigilnaut. But now, without further ado, let's dive into Zeri's newest story. And once again, because it's not the longest, let's cover it word for word. So here is the unexpected spark. I can't accept this, the shopkeeper said, pushing Zeri's change back to her. It's just spare parts. You have done too much to help since the mist. Restless, Zeri looked around. Familiar streets showed unfamiliar loss. Homes and shops battered by wicked sorcery that nearly ended the world. People were missing. Families were hurting. But crowds still gathered at the entrance markets. Zeri didn't understand exactly what had happened. But she knew this. Zorn would rebuild. And she would help. She frowned at the shopkeeper's work-hardened hands. And pushed her own forward. Get some banana cues. For your girls. The shopkeeper sighed. Then smiled. Zeri continued through the market, recalling her grandma's often repeated reminders. Ignore old man Shy. His parts are always rusted. Line up early at Auntie Maria's. Her marinated chicken is divine. Zeri admitted her grandma could sometimes seem annoying, but she couldn't deny that the woman was right. Her grandma knew the market and its people inside out, like how most daughters loved caramelized bananas. And it was in moments like this where the intimacy proved helpful. Come here, rat! Zeri spun toward the noise in time to see a boy scurrying through the crowd. Two men tailed him, one short and square, the other tall with lanky limbs. Their outfits were unmistakable, Cam Baron thugs. As the boy darted by, Zeri snatched his arm. There, quick! She said, pointing with her lips at Moe's shop. The shopkeeper nodded knowingly. The frightened boy stood still. Trust me, go! The boy sprinted over, ducking under a table that Mo quickly covered with cloth. Hi, looking for someone? Zeri shouted at the lackeys as they approached. The men shoved past the locals. Yeah, a kid. Just ran through here. You see him? Asked the stocky one. Maybe. Maybe not. The man narrowed his eyes. Tell us. We won't hurt you. Doubt that. But let's skip to the part where I hurt you instead. The man laughed. With what? Zeri reached where her gun was usually strapped. Only to find nothing there. Crap. Must have left it at my mom's workshop again. Well, time to improvise. She rubbed her hands together and started running in place. The thugs straightened in surprise. Is she... dancing? Observed the lanky one. Who cares? His partner squawked. Nab her already! Zeri's hands and feet became a blur. The gear on her jacket's back, a limiter device she called the spark pack, spun with building electricity. In a blink, she zipped between the men, blowing them over in a trail of wild lightning. Stray currents bounced from her body onto nearby doors and awnings, leaving little embers. Zeri skitched to a screeching halt. The lackeys lay collapsed on the ground. Her jaw dropped when she noticed the blackened awning collapse and fall to the street. Oh, sorry, I don't worry about it, said Mo, gesturing under the table for the kid to come out. You're amazing, the boy blurted, arms stretched wide. You gotta help me, they still have my parents. What? Where? Zeri asked. Corner of Brass Copper Alley, a factory. They... They took them there, and others. I saw it. Got it. 
Zeri nodded. What's your name? Timik. Timik? I'll get your parents. Zeri's eyes met Mo's. Mind doing me another favor? Sure thing. Mo patted Timik's head. Hey, kiddo. Want some banana cues for dinner? Like its neighboring streets, Brass Copper Alley housed rows of Cambaron factories. Soot filled with air heavy enough to taste. Who else but barons would force people to work in these conditions? On the corner, a few guards reeking of less than five spirits played cards by a run-down building with rusted double doors. Just like Timik described, Zeri touched her belt, ensuring her gun was secure. She looked for another way in, spotting a rickety air vent large enough to crawl through halfway up a nearby wall. She jumped for the opening, coming up inches short. Stepping back, Zeri ran, her feet catching sparks. She hopped higher this time, boosted with electricity. You already played that card. She heard a guard growl as her fingers gripped the vent's edge. Did not, snapped another. And you would have known too if your head wasn't buried in that bottle. Zeri exhaled in relief. Right again, grandma. Guards are lazier at night. She pulled herself into the vent and started crawling, eventually coming to a large gate in the floor. Below was a curious room, where wide metal pipes lined every wall. The exit was closed off by the double doors she saw earlier. In the middle, a group of people assembled parts, as several thugs with Hextech-powered spears watched on like jail guards. Every time something reached the end of the assembly line, a thug tested it, and every time, there would be a flash of blue light followed by nothing. The guard captain smashed these apparent failures and demanded the people to start over. And they said you were the smart ones, he said, spitting on the floor. Zeri could tell these people were clearly being held against their will, parents and spouses and friends all suffering. Without thinking, Zeri banked a fist charged with frustration and electricity against the gate, which rattled from the impact. Zeri scrambled to secure it, but as the heavy gate fell from its fixture, so did she. With a loud clang, she landed in the middle of the factory floor. The room gasped and recoiled in surprise. Is it him? asked a thug, shaking off the shock. No, snarled the captain. Her face doesn't have the painted hourglass. Zeri rushed to her feet. Do know who you're expecting, but you can't keep these people here like this. The captain scowled. Says who? Me. Zeri whipped out her gun, her right hand clutching its rusted crimson grip. Her mom had designed it without trigger or magazine, needing only her daughter's innate electricity, which now swelled with anger. Static bust from Zeri's hand into the gun's conductive barrel. She took aim. Ultrashock laser! A thunderous beam struck the double doors behind the thugs, blasting the rusted metal apart. Run! Zeri cried. I'll take care of the guards. The hostages scattered, guards in pursuit. A woman grabbed Zeri's arm. Have you seen my son? He wasn't taken with us. Timik's fine, he's... Timik? No, that's not... More thugs swarmed close. Zeri yanked the gun to face them and fired, pushing them back and creating space for the worried woman to flee. We gotta go, a man warned, pulling the woman away. Zeri unleashed more electric bullets as cover fire. When word of this gets out to your boss, she yelled, you're gonna wish you'd kill me here. The frustrated guards turned their attention away from the fleeting hostages and toward Zeri. Good, come to me. As they approached, she vaulted onto the wide interlocking pipes attached to the walls. It was made of brass and copper, natural conductors. Zeri's feet crackled with electricity. Fueled by her sparks, she skated along the web of pipes, unloading flurries of bullets at three of the onrushing guards. Their bodies twitched and flailed before falling over. Deftly, Zeri switched directions, dropping the next few who were climbing the side railing to surprise her from behind. Only a handful of her attackers were left. She could head home soon. Her family was probably worried sick. A blast struck the pipe beneath Zeri, forcing her off balance. She crashed to the ground. Got you now, the captain said, holding what looked like a Hextech cannon, smoke billowing from its muzzle. His remaining troops rallied, spears ready. 
Zeri struggled to her feet, head spinning, knees scrapped and bleeding, electric currents flickering across her injured body. She lifted her gun to fire. It fizzled. The captain smirked. Damn, must have broken in the fall. Her enemies closed in. Screw it! Zeri chucked her gun aside and tore off her jacket. Freed from the spark pack, she felt her body surge with voltage. Leaping into the air, she punched her fist up toward the ceiling. Lightning crash! Bioelectric waves shot from her fist, then her chest, and then her entire body, ripping the space asunder. Like a lightning storm, the waves arced off conductive metals, crackling violently as they drowned the room with Zeri's raw power. Bodies jolted before dropping in doves. Zeri fell to her knees, her knuckles propping her up. Blinking sweat from her eyes, she felt searing pain from her wounds everywhere at once. That better have worked. You little shit. The captain's voice cut through the room. Zeri saw him stumble to his feet, bleeding from his nose and ears. Why? Zeri roared. Why hurt innocent people? The man scoffed, kicking the limp bodies around him in search of his weapon. No one's innocent in the Baroness's eyes. A hum filled the air as the captain lifted his cannon toward Zeri. With what little force she could muster, Zeri tumbled to the side and slipped behind a large fallen pipe. The blast flung her and her cover into a wall. Zeri's vision turned black. When her eyes opened, the captain was gone. Staggering under moonlight, Zeri headed home through nearly empty streets. She was relieved the hostages were safe, but still gritted her teeth. The Cambarons, they always had more. More resources, more power. Their strength was the system they created with everyone under their reign, all contributing to a zone they controlled. Maybe the captain was right, no one's innocent. And everyone's a victim. A flash of blue light erupted from behind her, stopping Zeri in her tracks. Hey, nice work. She turned to see a teenager with a painted face and a glowing bat in hand. Unsure if she had been tailed, Zeri tried to ready herself once more, but struggled to stand up straight in the face of the stranger. Relax, the young man said. Timik told me about you. And who are you? Zeri asked. Name's Echo. These goons from the warehouse were looking for me before you showed up. But man, you wrecked them. Zeri sighed. If he's against the barons, he's alright. Look, Echo continued. I know you've got questions. So do I. And I've gotta ask. Why help folks you don't know? Zeri shrugged. I stand up for my community. Echo smiled. Then we should talk. Zon needs people like you. And I oughta thank you for saving my parents tonight too. Zeri smiled back. Anytime. And that was the story of Zeri. Immediately we have a bunch of things to talk about. First of all, yes it is cool that at the very beginning it is revealed that this is happening right after the ruination. It mentions how the streets were still destroyed by the mist. But more importantly, since no one else fits the description of Baron Spindlow, I assume the captain here was Spindlow himself. That's the new big baddie of Zeri's story. However, he mentioned that he is working for the Baroness. Of course, Zon has many different barons, but the only two canon ones that are female that we know about are Baroness Voss, the one who tortured Urgot, and the new upcoming champion. So you know what this means. Just like Samira teased Rel in her color story, it seems like Zeri is teasing the next champion too. And Spindlow is going to be her sidekick. And then of course the story revealed the moment she and Echo met for the first time. I really love how Echo simply makes sense in this story. Everyone was taken into the factory, but the mother that was looking for her son couldn't find him there. That's simply because Echo could rewind time and disappear. That's why Echo wasn't there. Because yes, as Echo mentioned, his parents were there. Interestingly enough, I wonder if Echo meeting Zeri is a setup for Convergence, the platformer game that will feature Echo. 
And by extension, I wonder if that game will also feature the other barons. But so far, we still don't know who's gonna be the main villain of that game. Overall, this was a pretty good story. It was short, it was simple, and it has some interesting teasers. And seeing how good Riot has been with connecting stories to upcoming events, you know, there's gonna be a new new story soon too, right? 